Multiplication using arrays drawn on grids. And the grids we can use to draw our arrays include grid paper uh, or grid squares found within a maths textbook. So here is a grid page and on it we have drawn an array of three groups of four. We know that this is the case because if we count how many rows there are, which I've shown with the black dots along the side, we can see there are three rows. And if we count how many are in each row with the uh, black dots along the top, uh, we can see that there are four in each row. So that gives us three groups of four equals 12. Now this is very handy using the grid paper because we can actually rub out the connecting lines showing us the counters in the middle. And we can still see the grid squares um, inside our red um, rectangle show where those counters actually are. So we still see our three rows of four and our 12 counters inside this shape. Now we can move on to a larger array and this time we're going to look at um, 10 rows which I can start to draw by making a line that's 10 squares high and it's going to be six in each row. So I'll draw a line that is six squares along. So this is how I'm going to create my array that's going to be 10 groups of six. And I can finish that array by finishing off my shape. And if I look closely inside at the grid squares, I can actually see a row of six grid squares along the top and then another row and another row so that there are a total of 10 rows working their way down my rectangle there. And of course, to solve that, it is 10 groups of six equals 60. Now these are quite simple examples so far. However, if we apply this technique to something larger, we can start to see its value. So here we have eight groups of 23. So we would just approach this in the exact same way. I would draw a line that is eight squares high, and this would be my eight rows. And then I would make sure that I've got 23 in each row. So I draw a line across the top of my array shape that is 23 squares along. And I'd close off that shape. And if I look closely along the top there, there are 23 squares. And then one row down, there's another 23 and so on. And I have eight rows altogether. Now to solve this, I can first of all recognize that it is an eight times table. So it's a times table less than 10. So since it's one of my simple ones, I can use my eight times strategy, which is double, double again, double again. So to do that, I would first uh, double the first row in my array, which gives me 46. Then I'm gonna double that green section, which will bring me to the middle of my shape, uh, which I've marked out in yellow, um, and that will give me a total of 92. Then I can double that yellow section which will bring me into the blue outlined uh, rectangle, and that gives me 184. So I'm just doubling 23 to make 46, doubling to 46 to make 92, and doubling 92 to make 184. Okay. Um, however, in the interest of showing you this technique for even larger numbers than something as simple as an eight times table, let me model another approach. In another way we can tackle this is by starting to break our array into friendly chunks that we find easy to solve. And the obvious way to do that would be to break the shape every 10 squares. The reason being 10 times tables are our easiest ones to tackle. So you can see I've marked with uh, some light blue dots um, along the side there just so that you can see that I've counted 10 and that it's accurate and then I'll count another 10 and then I can count the final three so there's 23 along that row so I can break it up into 10 then the next 10 then the final three and I break the actual array by ruling the lines through it so I can see the chunks that I've made so the first array there that we've broken off is eight groups of 10. And if you can see there, we've still got the eight rows going down the side, but we've put a light blue line at the end of the 10th counter. So it's eight groups of 10. The next array chunk that we've created is exactly the same. 
we've made another eight rows of 10. So that's going to make easy working for us because we're going to get the same answer for each of those arrays. And then the skinny array at the end is eight rows, but there's only three left in each row. So it's eight groups of three. Then to solve this times table, we've got our eight groups of 23. We've broken them into three smaller arrays that are much easier to solve. So we solve those arrays. Eight groups of 10 is 80, and eight groups of three is 24. And then we now need to add up those numbers to find our total of what eight groups of 23 will actually be. So that will be 80 plus 80 plus 24, which equals 184. And there you have it, eight times 23 equals 184. And we've solved what seems to be a more difficult times table, but with very simple arrays. Let's look at this approach now with another example, 16 groups of seven. So first of all, I would create my outline of my array by making sure it is 16 in height and seven squares in width. Uh, so it, we can count those out um, and cut it into a more friendly uh, set of times tables. And again, I'm using the same strategy. I'm gonna count 10 squares down. And I've shown you that by counting them with my blue dots. So we've got 10 squares down Obviously, the remaining squares I haven't counted, I'm expecting to be six squares because it's 16 rows. Uh, and if I count them out so that you can see that it's actually true, it is indeed six rows. So I've broken my 16 rows into 10 rows first and six rows. Now the rows haven't changed, they're rows of seven. So we have the seven up the top, just to remind us that's how, that's how many are in each row. And of course, if I have 10 rows of seven, that is written as 10 times seven, and six rows of seven can be written out as six times seven. So there are no tricks here. I am just breaking it down from 16 rows of seven into 10 rows first, solving that, and then the, the following six rows and solving that. So 10 groups of seven is 70. Six times seven is a times table I should know, which is 42. And then I simply add those together. And 112 would be the answer to 16 times seven. Now, if someone asked me what is 16 times seven, uh, I would ha have no idea. I would uh, struggle to fumble my way through solving it. However, if I very quickly used a strategy like this one and solved 10 groups first is 70 and then added the six more groups on, um, you can see how quickly and efficiently I can start solving multiplications. So up to this point, all the examples in this video have involved multiplying some large numbers, so double digit numbers such as 16 or 23, by single digit numbers. So in this example it was 7 and in the last example it was 8. This is where I would encourage you to keep practicing until you're confident with this idea. So you might be tackling some large numbers like 37 or 56, but I would say to you, keep those multiplied by numbers under 10. So you might try 56 times 8 or 32 times 5. Um, so we're wanting to make sure we're confident with this idea with the grid arrays and our strategies of breaking them down before moving on.